or all herbivores that eat high fiber diets, they get actually most of their nutrition from the breakdown of that fiber, the bacteria in their guts actually feed on the fiber. There are no vertebrate animals that can break down fiber. So they have to cultivate these bacteria, which break down the fiber and actually eat the fiber. And that's what they get their nutrition from. And then they expel and excrete short chain fatty acids. That's a waste product of these bacteria. And that's what the animal absorbs. And these are hundred percent saturated fats. So even gorillas that just get did just eat green leaves, they get about 70% of their calories from saturated fat cows get as much as 80% of their calories from saturated fat, because they're much more efficient at breaking these things down. And then those bacteria break down and die off. And the animal absorbs those and gets the protein from those bacteria. And so that's actually what they are eating. We don't have that ability anymore. We've lost that millions of years ago. And this is evidenced by the fact that we have what's called uh, an appendix, which in other primates and other animals are who are hind gut digesters is actually a very, very long cecum. And that's where fiber will actually pack down into and break down into short chain fatty acids. So that's where they get the majority of their, of their nutrition and their calories. We don't have that ability anymore. You know, the, uh, an appendix is a vestigial cecum. Vestigial meaning that millions of years ago, it used to be this large organ that could do this, but since we haven't used it in millions upon millions upon millions of years, it has shriveled up and gone away because your gut is a very high, has a very high energy demand. And so if you're not using part of your intestine, it is really holding you back and wasting energy, which is death in the wild. You can also look at this in as far as uh, colon disease and diverticulosis. Diverticulosis has been shown to have only a few correlating events. So constipation, high fat diet, and you know, meat diets and all these sorts of things have no association with diverticulosis. In fact, there's a study showing with thousands of patients and thousands of colonoscopies looking at what factors were associated with this. They found the only things that had even an association with diverticulosis, which is sort of the outpouching and breakdown of your, of your distal colon. And it's gonna get infected and have problems. You can die from this. You have to get part of your colon removed. You'll have to have a you know, colostomy bag. And the only things that were associated with diverticulosis, which could then turn to diverticulitis, was increased fiber and increased number of bowel motions a day. Well, I look at diverticulosis as colon failure. You have overworked this organ and it's just, it's just run out of life. It's just run out of miles and it's just going to start falling apart now and not work as well as it would have otherwise. Even when people do get diverticulitis or appendicitis or cancer and anastomoses and, and other sorts of, of bowel issues, you will see general surgeons and colorectal surgeons putting people on what is called a low residue diet. Really, that, that's just a low fiber diet. And that's because they want to rest the bowel. And so they don't want the bowel working and, and expending all this effort and energy and pushing and squeezing and peristalsing to get rid of this stuff. DoctorsToTrust.com, the world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos.